What is up everyone? So this is a highly anticipated video for myself. I've had a lot of people ask me for a collection tour and the time is finally here. I myself love to watch other people's collection tours on YouTube. It is something that I frequently do. And honestly, it tells a lot about the collector when you look at these tours. It shows you all their passions and loves and you get to learn a lot of new things about toys or merch that you've never seen before. Let's kick this off right at the entrance. I have an over the door hanger and this is where I place just a bunch of Random plush, mostly Pokemon, as you can see. There's even like some pockets on the side and I can place some some smaller things there. And so against this wall where the door is, I have a bunch of tech decks and some Hot Wheels. So World Industries was my favorite. It was my very first skateboard when I was skating as a kid. So I always loved Flame Boy and Wet Willy. I even have this like inflatable Wet Willy that my mom got me from like some skate shop a long time ago. like in the early 2000s. Just below that is some of my Super Treasure Hunt Hot Wheel cars. I was casually hunting for supers for a few years. I still look every now and then, but as many of you know, Hot Wheel collectors are insane. They're some of the craziest collectors out there. So any chance I can find a super over one of them, I'm extremely happy. But this is my very humble collection. Across from that, we are gonna look at our bookcases. So starting with Sonic the Hedgehog, this is a G Fuel blow up promo display that one of my Walmarts have. They let me have it before they destroyed it. So I love displays and promos like this. I think they're super unique and it holds like a special like timeline in your collection. I don't know, they're very unique and they're, you know, obviously hard to find. Just below that I have some Sonic plush. So we have Super Sonic and we also have a classic Sonic. We have the new Holiday Amy and Sonic figures, Sonic with the chili dog, and then some Jack's Gold figures. I got this Fire Bro from Ross and then Star Power Mario was from Burlington. I, they're, I think they're both like $6.99. Below that we have some more Sonic characters. So I have like the three inch, four, and then the new Sonic Primes. Rouge and Shadow are my favorite characters. So anytime there's variants or just new sculpts from them I always try to pick them up moving on down we have some more Sonic figures so I cleared a bunch of space to add some more figures that are coming and this is more of like my Jack Scolds right here so I found all these at Burlington except for the Super Sonic that one I unfortunately had to get from Makari and then we have the new Shadow the Hedgehog Lego set which I absolutely love the next shelf down is like a random assortment of just different figures since I'm not a huge Marvel Legends you know collector I throw a lot of that stuff in there but you can see I have some of that Pixar spotlight figures I don't think they're making any of these figures anymore. I know Buzz is like super expensive now, but I don't think they make any Spotlight series figures. Which is a shame because there's still a lot of characters out there that I would love to see. But I have some NECA figures back there. I have the Goliath and then some Storm Collectibles. I actually have Scorpion somewhere. I think he's still packed up somewhere. But Wolverine is my favorite Marvel character. So any rendition of Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, I have to have that figure. We have some Pennywise over there. We have the very few McFarlane figures. So I have the Joker, Heath Ledger, and then also the Dark Knight. And then Gears of War Storm Collectibles. I still need to get Cole. And then we have Ghosts. We have the NECA Spider. Some Legos right here, which should actually go on that shelf over there. And then below that is my other like random assortment shelf. So I cleared a bunch of space because I know that the Red Eyes Black Dragon is coming out, the Blue Eyes White Dragon is coming out, so I have to make room for those. And then here's my very humble Digimon collection here. These figures are amazing. I mean, for $20, you can't really beat that. I mean, the articulation and the detail is just absolutely phenomenal. And then this is the only G.I. Joe figure that I have, is that like Croc Master, and that's all I wanted was the crocodile because it's just a beautiful piece and then there's the baby's bone <laughs> underneath it and the very bottom shelf is going to be my wrestling figures which <laughs> i don't have a lot of them i mostly just really enjoy macho man so i try to grab all the mattel macho mans that they've released i know i've missed quite a bit but these are some of the most iconic ones you know obviously we have the cream and then the slim jim one and then this was like the crowdfunding macho man i'm definitely not taking this out of the package it's just such a beautiful piece and then i also really enjoy Sting and then I ended up finding one of those AEW MJF chases and it actually is a factory error it didn't come with his hands so definitely gonna hold on to that and so another very small humble collection that was one bookcase down let's move into the second one up top we have a bunch of Pokemon so this is the beginning of my Pokemon collection I have some out-of-country vinyl figures out there I have some sealed elite trainer boxes some plush the corduroys I love these Bulbasaur obviously my favorite Pokemon this is the Pokemon Center Squishmallow, the very first one they released, and it has that little Pokeball on the backside. I have some more figures layering the top shelf. This
This is a uh, Japan exclusive. They did like a Pokemon Day at Universal Studios Japan, and they had this like Bulbasaur cup, so I had to import that. And I have some Pokemon Trainer Team series up there, a Lechonk, a Racer. I wish that was a figure, but I'll take an Eraser. Below that, we have my first Nintendo shelf. Mainly figures here, lots of variety. I have some Amiibo Animal Crossing cards. Cookie, Sly, and Cherry are my favorite villagers. I still have to pick up Cherry's card. So mostly Jack's figures here. They did a fantastic job on the Breath of the Wild, Link, and Zelda. Also that Samus figure. These are also Jack's, the Star Fox crew. Had to pick those up. I mean, they are the OGs. I wish Jax would make a lot more characters than just, you know, Mario, Luigi, Peach, and all that. I mean, come on. Super Mario Sunshine, Luigi's Mansion. There is so much they could do. But Yoshi back here, that's the talking Yoshi. This is my original Super Smash Bros. Melee game. So many great memories with that. Just beneath that, I have one of my favorite shelves. This is my Bionicles. All of these are my original ones from my childhood. Nothing new, nothing that I recently grabbed. Have. these are all the ones that I used to have and I just love this so much that's why I love the shelf is because this is all from my childhood and this guy is a custom that I made when I was a kid and I kept him exactly like this so it was really cool to like unbox all this and just to find that original Bionicle that I made so obviously he had to be displayed. And the Lego trend kind of continues down here. I opened up some more space because I know that Animal Crossing sets are coming out soon. So I wanna add some of that here. I mean, I have more Legos to display, but I just don't have as much room. I have some rarer minifigures back there. So like the Django Fett, the Chrome Stormtrooper, and like a custom clone trooper that I, I made back there for some reason. And so I need to complete these McDonald's Bionicle figures. I'm missing like, pieces and I'm also missing like one or two characters and then this is like a Toys R Us exclusive Bionicle mask you open it up and there's like a bunch of masks like slots in there and you can put masks in there and then these are some of like the leftovers that I had from like the blind boxes from back in the day below that is an empty shelf <laughs> So I'm probably going to put more Legos there or I'm thinking about putting some more random type of figures once I fill that up and then maybe some Godzilla figures there. I have some coming on the way. Again, I reorganized everything so I made a lot of room for a lot of upcoming things so I didn't want to overfill anything and I also wanted to keep everything kind of relevant to what I'm collecting right now. Moving to the next bookcase over if you look above we have our legendary birds and Lugia. So those are the Pokemon selected Jazzwares figures and that is the epic battle figure Lugia. Great figures. I highly recommend you pick them up if you have a chance to. And that's going to lead me into my first shiny shelf. All of this is official imported Pokemon merch from Japan. All right, we're gonna pause here for a minute because I wanna kind of break this down for you. So these are Japan exclusive Pokemon figures. So these are basically finger puppets. In Japan, they're called like Pokemon kids and they're hollow on the underside. So that's where it gets the term like finger puppets. But anyways, these are all official Bandai products of shiny Pokemon. There's a lot to collect. I have, I think a little over half. So I still have a lot to go and they're expensive. So they come in these like boxes. Like if you can see this box back here, they come in sets like this, or at least some of them do. So for example, this one came in a set of five and there are a lot of them selling complete with box for about, man, four to $500 just for those little figures alone. This has been like a collecting side quest for me. And so back here I have a sealed shiny box. So this has Tepig, Snivy and Oshawott in it has never been opened. I still have the certificate too. I actually have two of these and I, it seemed like the seller in Japan was kind of offloading them because they had like four or five of them. I got them for a great deal and I'm going to keep them sealed. Eventually I'd like to find some that are loose and open so I can actually display them here. But this is what I got going on so far and this is one of the very few official shiny Charizard figures that they've ever made. And seeing this is actually what turned me on to wanting to collect these in general and then I found out there's like 60 plus of them and so now I'm just down this rabbit hole <laughs> and then at the front of the shiny shelf We have some other things other than Bandai finger puppets, but this is a Tomy shiny Gyarados They also have a Magikarp and that one the Magikarp sells for like 
$500, and it's like this size, it's crazy. I think it was a lottery prize, so I think that's why it's so valuable. And then these are Western official, so that we have Zacian and Zamazente shiny figures. These were in that Pokemon TCG box set, so I had to pick those up. And then we have a shiny Rayquaza from Tomy, and then this was a Bandai model kit of shiny Rayquaza, so obviously I had to pick this up. Eventually, I want to transfer all these shiny figures into a glass cabinet, which you will see later on within this video. Below that shiny shelf, we have some normal Pokemon figures. So I think this is every Pikachu from Jazzwares. I think I might be missing one or two variants. I did just recently pick up the second Valentine's Day set. So it has Pikachu holding a Great Ball card and the heart that it's holding I think is pink. But this is the first shelf, Bulbasaur, obviously my favorite Pokemon, I love Ivysaur, and of course I love Venusaur, so we have some more figures here. And this is like a wind-up Magikarp that I got from Japan, so they had a campaign to find a gold one, and I ended up purchasing two gold ones, and these are pretty cool. So you wind them up and it just like flops around, and it's a really unique item, super awesome. And then I have some more figures down here, so we have a bunch of Scythers, because I love Scyther, Caesar, Magmortar, and you know, we have our Ghastly Evolutionary line. We have a few Tomy figures from my childhood. My daughter likes to play with those, so I kind of keep those readily available. We have some Alcremie figures, and we have some of those environmental sets. Below that is a loosely filled shelf. So anything around this level is what my daughter can touch and reach. So I try to put things there that she likes to play with. So, I mean, this is what she was playing with like a few days ago. So I have a bunch of figures that she can just mess around with. And then at the lowest level are things that I haven't displayed yet or kind of like a little bit of storage. I've been meaning to open up that Metagross. So I'll eventually get to displaying those and putting them up somewhere. The next bookcase over is some more Pokemon items. I think that's a life-size Bulbasaur. I could be wrong, but Jazzwares makes it, and they released it a few years ago, and I had to pick that up. We have an official Burger King employee hat when they had those toys uh, back in the day. This was my original Tomy, actually, no, I'm sorry, my original Hasbro Pikachu plush. The first shelf to this bookcase is some loosely based TCG stuff, so I have some graded Charizards here. This was the Charizard that I pulled from Hidden Fates. Hidden Fates actually is what brought me back into TCG. I took a long break, but the rest of this is just some, you know, loose TCG cards. I keep most of my cards in binders and I do have a handful that are graded. And then below that we have some more Pokemon figures. These are some of my favorites to be honest. I have the Legendary Beast right there patiently awaiting Entei. So I'm going to figure out how I want to display them all properly once I get the third beast in here. And we have the Pokemon Select and Mewtwo. A lot of people are having issues, you know, putting Mewtwo on the stand. I don't have that hard of a time. I mean, once I get him in there, he's in there and he's never fallen off. So it just takes some tweaking, that's for sure. But anyways, I have another Venusaur over here. You can find that on Amazon, some more environmental packs. And I try to put the Pokemon that could be found in that environment, you know, surrounding it. And then below that, we have some more Pokemon plush. So these are the Velvet plush from Jazzwares. These are brand new. And what's funny is this Psyduck is like, I guess, super hard to find. First of all, it's a new design of Psyduck. Psyduck. I mean, they've never done this design before, and they released it for the very first time as a Velvet plush. So if you see it and you're a Psyduck fan, I would highly recommend grabbing it because it's definitely the hardest one to find. And then I have these unknown plush from the Pokemon Center, so they spell out my name and I was gonna like put them on the front side of my door, but it just didn't end up working out too well, so now they're just resting here on the shelf. On to the next bookcase, which will lead us into Jurassic. We'll start from the bottom and work our way up. I have three <laughs> of these Hasbro hybrid Indominus Rexes. It was at the end of Hasbro's license for Jurassic World, so they're pretty expensive now for what they are. I mean, I think they go for like $80 a pop, but I ended up finding all of these on like either OfferUp or Facebook Marketplace. Each one I got for under $25. I got them usually in a bundle or a lot. And then the same thing with this like Triceratops down here. It's like a Stegosaurus Triceratops. I forgot exactly what it's called, but that one was like a hybrid and it's pricey as well. I have the Walmart Allosaurus with the exposed ribcage. Super cool looking. And then I have some more mainline dinosaurs. This is actually that Transformers Jurassic collab. So I have the Explorer in the other room. But uh, some of my favorites here, we have the Jeep, and then this is a sealed set that I won from San Diego Comic-Con at the Mattel booth. I had some of the designers sign it, and so that's a grail piece for me. That was such a great time. Making our way up, we have the Hammond Collection, my primary focus 
for Jurassic right now. So I have a bunch of carnivores up here. So we got some raptors and things like that. We have the Dimetrodon, which I just reviewed. The ever beautiful Carnotaurus. I have some sealed figures back there. So I didn't open up Nedry or Hammond just because I have a few of them over there from like the main line. And then I have a sealed Dilophosaurus that I picked up as a spare when they first came out. So I'm obviously going to keep that one sealed. I have a male Velociraptor back there. Moving up, we have our bigger dinosaurs. At the end, we have some OG Raptors. Moving on down, we have the Steven Spielberg set. He is recording me recording Triceratops, which I think she is moving up in value right now. So if you don't have her, get her now because I think she's creeping up to $100. And then we have the OG Rexy. This was the first one that they released before they started fixing those eyes. I did pick up a spare of the new release, so I'll have a clean eye set in case anything goes wrong with that. Here is the Comic-Con exclusive set. This is like the outhouse. You press it in and there's like lights and sounds that happen. Super cool piece. I love that. This was from their mainline set, you know, when dinosaurs ruled the earth from the very first film. And then I have some of my vintage dinosaurs up here. The Gulper T-Rex from The Lost World. I mean, I have my original one back here and I love this piece so much. It's so beautiful. Eventually, I like to track down, what is it, that chaos effect and then also the Toys R Us exclusive, but... They're a little out of my price range for now. I'm a deal hunter, I like to find deals. So here's some more stuff over here. We have my original Kenner Red Rex, the new Red Rex, and then some other dinosaurs. We have a Spinosaurus, Brachiosaurus, and then I ended up getting this banner and a bunch of other stuff in like an offer up lot. A few years ago, this guy had a listing for like a bunch of free promo items and it was like part of a cardboard display for the Lost World VHS sets. And then this was in there and like some Raptor Crossing signs, which reminds me I need to put those up somewhere. So yeah, that was cool. That was like the deal of the year to find that. Moving on down, we have my favorite dinosaur, the Spinosaurus. So I have almost every single Spinosaurus that they've released. Here's all the snap squads and here's all the main lines. They did announce that one like green and black Spinosaurus, which was supposed to be a Walmart exclusive with that, I think Albertosaurus or something, but they canceled it. I don't know why they did that. I don't know. I'm super frustrated about that. So only like a handful, I think maybe less than five of that Spinosaurus exists. So that is like my next collecting grail if I can find a loose one somewhere. Below that, we have the short-lived Amber Collection. I have all the Raptors. I really love this line. So I'm sad to see that it went away so soon. I have two of the Dilophosaurus. I ended up getting one super cheap in like a, a lot or something. So I had to display those. Those are going for a crazy amount of money also, as well as Charlie back there because it was just a short release and they didn't release very many of them so they're going for over $150 or something like that. Below that are the Amber Collection humans. I have all of them including Ellie. She's uh, in the other room. My daughter took her so she is MIA at the moment but I have some Hammond Collection as well as some mainline figures kind of mixed in together and then I have some Gallimimus from the mainline. This was like the OG callback to the Kenner figures so super cool to have those and then I have some more mainline dinosaurs down down here so the Nasutosaurus from the battle at Big Rock I remember how hyped we were for that amazing this is a custom so she did a phenomenal job on that we have the buck t-rex from the main line and then some other dinosaurs right here plesiosaurus is and then we have an Indominus Rex Patasaurus and then the Jurassic World Dominion, Alan Grant, and Dimetrodon down there. We're going to make our way to the first corner, which is the start of the Star Wars shelf. We have the Imperial Shuttle from Micro Galaxy Squadron. We have Star Killer, which is the latest Hasbro Pulse exclusive. And then we have that awesome PR box that Jazzware sent over. Such a cool piece. I love that. And then below that, we have Boba Fett's throne room. I have some Gamorrean guards, some Cantina band members. We have Fennec. And then Boba just sitting there like... Like a G. We have Salacious Crumb on the barbecue back over there. And then a Lonely Tuscan Raider with another Gamorrean Guard. Below that is the start of our Black Series figures. So I kind of split it up between like Sith and Empire and then like Republic and all that. So we have a bunch of boys over here. I love the troopers. I have a good variety here. We have some Scarif Troopers, some Purge Troopers. Below that we have some First Order. I have Kylo Ren. I have that Palpatine set right here. I have Duels and Darth Vader. But I did a reel of Palpatine like acting all silly and stuff like that so I have them just kind of sitting there and that was an Amazon exclusive and that like 
also barely saw the light of day and it's crazy prices now for that. Oh, and at the front of the shelves, I do have some micro galaxy squadrons sprinkled in there. I took a bunch of those troopers from those speeder bikes and I put them in the ATAT -AT walkers for some of those review videos. And then I have some folded up battle droids ready for battle. Next is one of my favorite shelves in this entire collection room and that is the Knights of the Old Republic. So I have the original Darth Malak on card back there. I have Darth Revan on the opposite side that came with like the coin and all that. I have the first appearances of Darth Revan in comic book form. I have some Funko Pops back there. Darth Malak is behind Darth Malak. I also have Light Side Revan and Bastila, that two pack from GameStop, but it's still packed away and I'll eventually dig it out and add it to the collection. But I also have his lightsaber there. I had to have that. I have two Lego minifigures, one sealed and then one loose in front of Bastila right there. And then the Black Series figures, which are amazing. And yeah, this shelf filled up really quick. Below that is just kind of like a catch-all shelf. I was putting a bunch of my Republic gunships here. I have a bunch of troopers in a little baggie because I was doing some stuff and I obviously didn't want to lose them either. And then below that is kind of like a catch-all. I have some Pokemon books or like, you know, those I Spy books. I have the Mewtwo for the giveaway I was doing and some other just, you know, odds and ends. Moving over to the next bookcase, I have a few random things done here. Power of the Force, Rancor, I have a Probe Droid, a Loose Dewback, and Talk Merrick's X-Wing. That's actually just the box. I have his actual ship displayed. Just just above that, I have our heroes, so this is going to be mostly Jedis, and I think the only one that we're missing right now is Kiati Mundi. I think they announced that figure, but it hasn't been released yet. I have the Ghost Crew, George Lucas, Dave Filoni, our hero, as an X-Wing pilot, the current R2-D2, some Micro Galaxy Squadron. This is a really great shelf. I love that one, and then just above that, it gets a little bit better. We have some boys, some shiny boys up here, so lots of clone troopers. I have some Phase 1 in the back, Phase 2 in the front, I have some TVC. 501st and I just have them chilling and I'm just all about that army building I've slowed down a little bit as of late I mean I would love to have even more of those phase 2 clone troopers because they are amazing but I just love watching people collect troopers army build them whether they're TVC black series Legos I just I'm all about it and then above that shelf we have more of our commanders I have the Bad Batch crew I didn't pick up the second season yet I probably will at some point but more of our commanders here I really love this Halloween clone trooper I thought it was just really well done super unique just just above that, the clones continue with TVC, so I have the Phase 2 Troopers, which I absolutely love those. I have some Phase 1s over there. I was for a while collecting droids. I mean, I love droids, but then I realized there is a bunch of them, and it got expensive really quick, so I stopped for a little bit. So here's some more Phase 1s. Arc Troopers, Commanders, and more of just like high-ranking clones are up here. Looking at the top, I have some more store displays. I have Captain Rex Funko Pop from the 2018 New York Comic Con. My buddy went there and grabbed that for me. But I really love this Black Series display. So this is actually supposed to be that Wal no, I'm sorry, that Walgreens end cap prototype Boba Fett that they had like years and years ago. But I ended up finding it on eBay for, I think I got it for like, $115 and it came with like the original packaging and all that kind of stuff so I saw that and I was like dude I have to have that I want to put Black Series figures on there or whatever it's one of my favorite displays I put that like galaxy poster board in the back just to give it a little bit more like depth instead of just like plain cardboard Oh, and like I mentioned before, the $2.99 Captain Rex from Ross. This is actually the last one that I have from when I found them there. And I always keep this here just to kind of remember that time. But man, that was a wild ride. Above that display, I have some of my Micro Galaxy Squadron chases. So I have the Outland TIE, Sokotano Starfighter. We have the ATST Raider. We have Antok Merrix, Luke Skywalker from the Mandalorian series, and also that TIE Fighter. I found all of those in store except for the Antok Merrick one. Jazzers actually sent that one over. Just below those is another display. This is that Walmart one that they had at the end caps, I think like summer of last year, but I asked them if I could have it because they only had like one or two figures on there and the employee was like, yeah, if you put those other figures on shelf, you can have it. So they let me take it and I put just a bunch of those prototype figures in there. And then below that, I have some more Micro Galaxy Squadron, Millennium Falcon, Endor ATAT, -AT, the Hoth One, and those like Black Series TVC ATSTs. I have a Black Series Dewback, Anakin Skywalker's Pod Racer that I like customized for a photo. 
Just above that, I have some more Micro Galaxy Squadron attached to the ceiling with some command hooks and the gunships. I had to do this. I mean, they look so clean. People do this with their Legos, and I knew immediately once these released, I was like, I gotta do this somehow. Next bookcase over, top shelf, I have a bunch of random troopers and just figures everywhere. So I have a little Ewok over there, a bunch of Mandos, Darth Maul, some Shore Troopers, some Jedis, Remnant Stormtroopers, and then I kind of recreated that New Hope scene in the very beginning. Next shelf down is some more black series so I went kind of buck wild and collected a lot of Mandalorians and then I was like well they're just gonna keep releasing a bunch of different Mandalorians and I'm just not going to collect all those anymore so this is like my Mando shelf so mostly characters from the show bunch of different Grogu's right here I have some TVC and black series some micro galaxy squadron those are actually three chases so very happy to have found those and you can see there's a little Grogu on the back of that scout trooper below that is a book of Boba Fett themed shelf at least for the most part I have some Cantina band members some Gamorrean guards back there some bounty hunters I think almost every Boba Fett back there, the OGs. I think the only one I'm missing is that like all black one. Fennec Shan, some Cad Banes, that Ned Droid knocking out a Stormtrooper, some more Gamorrean Guards, Tusken Raiders, and poor little Han Solo. Next shelf down is something a little different. I have some graded figures here. So I ended up getting two first edition Mandalorians. One of them was for my buddy Richie, and then I bought the second one. I submitted my off-world Jawa and then my Grogu from the HasLab Razor Crest to get graded, and the Grogu got a 90 and the Jawa got an 85 plus. And then like I said earlier, Hot Wheels, some super treasure hunts, these ones are super valuable. And I ended up finding two of them within the same day. And I think they sell for like over $120. And I put one of them in to get graded because it was like super clean and it got a 90. So that was super cool. And then I just put the other one in a case to display it as well. And this is nothing really special. It's Antoc Merrick's droid. I just didn't have the heart to take it out of the packaging because it just looks beautiful. At the bottom, I have some Micro Galaxy Squadron ships. So just various different vehicles all throughout, some X-Wings. And this was like the most efficient way for me to display them since I already have so much stuff all over the place. Moving over, that's going to lead us into Halo. So this is that NKOK toys, a bunch of the Warthogs and other vehicles that they sent me. The little white box is a kid robot like statue. It's not Halo. It's like a little space guy. The Club Mochi Mochi Master Chief. And I have those Wolverine boots back there. The shelf above that is mostly Halo 3. I have the Mattel Arbiter there, the original CD player, and the Halo 3 soundtrack from that reel that I did. I have three of those 12-inch McFarlane Master Chiefs. So cool. That sealed one back there I got from Off up in a lot for like $25. The guy just had it sitting there. It was nuts. And then I have the Mattel creations, the Mega Constructs, all the like Master Chiefs. But check this out. Where I used to live, I had a Savers pretty close by. I would go there all the time. And one day I found this sealed Arbiter Halo 3 McFarland statue and I got it for $9.99. So insane. Never skip out on your thrift stores. Unfortunately, I don't have one close by where I live now, so I definitely miss those days. Now we're going to start getting into our World of Halo Jazzwares figures. So I have a bunch of Marines here, and I have three Warthogs set up. One of them is that Neon Superfly, which is amazing. I've reviewed all of these on the channel, so if you haven't checked those out, be sure to give it a watch. I have our most recent Halo Infinite Master Chief there. Above that, we have our Spartans. This is every single Spartan that's been released so far in the the world of Halo with a few Marines sprinkled in. We have the Gun Goose, Gravity Hammer, we have some weapons packs back there. We have the Thousand Toys Master Chief. Remember when that went on sale at GameStop half off? We got we all got it for like $79, an absolutely insane deal. Above that is one of my pride and joys. This is my Halo 3 commemorative shelf, my favorite game from the Halo franchise. I do have our uh, CE Chief there though, you know, he's gonna stay up there, and our Halo 2 Chief because he's amazing. But anyways, this is most Halo 3 so I have two Chiefs Arbiter we have the Warthog we have a Marine holding on for dear life back there we have some flood the Halo 3 Spartan collection I do have a active camo chief back there so he's just kind of hanging out because no one can really see him and then that Xbox 360 make constructs I mean such a beautiful piece but I think this is my favorite shelf for my Halo collection. At the top shelf, I have some ODST and their drop pods. I have the San Diego Comic-Con Spartan Collection figure that they released, I think, two years ago. And then that's just the box for the Neon Superfly. I did find a second Halo 3 Master Chief Spartan Collection at a GameStop that was like super far away from me. So I grabbed it because I had to have one that was sealed since it is my favorite Master Chief and my favorite game. And then I found this Fred at like some sort of comic book store and it was super cheap. So I think it was like $14 or something like that. So I grabbed it because it was still sealed. And then I have that infamous 
Series 5 ODST from the world of Halo, the one that was not released out here in the States. But an update, Jazzwares should be releasing their Vault website this year, and I think they're gonna put their primary focus for Halo to be released on the website. So it should be this year, I mean, based on what they told us from the podcast. But once I get some more details, then I'll be uh, posting some updates. But then here at the top shelf, I have the McFarlane Warthog. I have a little Halo 3 promo, a little statue. I think it came with the Legendary Edition game. And then I have a Stubbins Master Chief, that's like a little plush company. The Mantis, my Halo 3 Legendary Edition game pack. We have the Jazzwares, lights and sounds, helmet for Master Chief, and then check out this little pen from Halo 2. I got this back when they did E3 for Halo 2, and I bought this on eBay back in the day because I thought it was so cool. It lights up if you put batteries in it, but the batteries are dead. Alongside the pen, I picked up these lanyards. I believe these were also given out at E3. So I had to have them because I thought they were super cool, and I'm glad I I've held on to them ever since then. Moving on, we have some more World of Halo, Banished Ghosts, some uh, weapons pack there, a brute manning that scrap cannon, Sergeant Forge, River Mormy, the Prophet of Mercy, a shade turret, and the grunt. And if you see those cups back there, these are those Canada exclusive Halo Infinite Cups, I believe from 7-Eleven. My really good buddy Kelsey, she grabbed these for me at the release, and I'm just so happy to have them. Very unique additions to the collection. Moving on down, we have our Banished and Covenant figures. This is every single one that's been released so far, officially anyways. And I just love the grunts. The grunts are some of my favorites. I just love all the different things that they say. But here's a good look at those figures back there. We have Aatrox, Eshram, some more Brutes, Chieftain, and here is the Series 5 Grenadier Grunt with those little flaming grenades right there. So awesome. Making our way on down, we have the Spartan Collection and some Joyride figures. Those three are my originals from my early teens. I don't know, I was like 13 or 14. 14. So those will always stay with me and then I picked up this chief from a buddy of mine But you can see my collection of these isn't quite as big as the world of halo It's just because I prefer the world of halo. I love the scale. I love the playability I love that I have vehicles for them And I just wasn't super impressed with the change in the knees for the longest time But now that they brought them back within series 7 and 8 I'm for the most part on board with all of the Spartan collection I also have Jaga back there who is a freaking beast if you saw that video then you saw what kind of monster he is Then I also have have Arbiter. I'm hoping that they release Halo 2 and 3 Arbiter. I think that would be amazing. But my favorite Spartan Collection figures is definitely going to be Bellos, the OG Series 1 slash 2 Halo Infinite Master Chief, Emil, Red Team, Yokai, and Halo 3 Chief. And the final shelf for my Halo figures is my McFarlane display, or at least what's left of it. I'm probably going to swap this out and put my other Halo items here. I mean, I did sell off most of my McFarlane figures a while ago, so these are just the remaining ones. And then I have that like old Joyride Warthog from when I was a kid. Unfortunately, the turret broke, but I still held on to it. We're getting pretty close to the end here, and that's going to lead us into my next very special area, and that is my first glass cabinet. Let's start with the easy stuff. I have the Hammond Collection Brachia source here I have micro galaxy squadron n1 we have the TVC n1 and of course and talk Merrick's x-wing all right the contents in this glass cabinet are very special and so I needed something a little bit bigger than a detoff so this is basically two detoffs in one I found this on Amazon I'll post the link in the description what I like the most about this is how wide it is it has dual doors with an exceptionally long shelf and a lock at the top to keep little toddler hands out of here. All right, let's start with the Legendary Beast. These were released in 2010 by Lottery System in Japan. Super rare. I ended up getting two Entes because I panic bought one in the very beginning thinking I was never going to find these. And then, of course, I found all three. And so now that's why I have two. Tagged, each of these goes for about uh, $1,200 or so, depending on tag condition. But I have seen them as low as $900. And then we have a Pokemon Rumble Shiny Pikachu figure. These were released in both the States and Japan. We have some shiny Legendary Beast Gachapons. We have Raikou, Entei, and Suicune. I imported those from Japan as well. We have Mega Rayquaza, Shiny Genesect, a Shiny Gyarados, which was a promo for the Hiroshima Toyo Carp, which is a baseball team out there in Japan. So they did a collaboration with the Pokemon Center in Hiroshima. You can see it has like a little baseball cap on top, which is the same logo as the Cincinnati Reds. And then we have a shiny Magikarp plush which was released in 2009. I imported most of this stuff from Japan. They always have the best items. 
a lot of exclusive and rare pieces like this trio of shiny Pikachu plush, which were Beam's collabs. And this Pikachu is holding a normal size Pikachu in a little shopping bag. We have a shiny Celebi, which I actually got from the Pokemon Center in the States, and a shiny Zora. All of these are tagged. Anytime I'm trying to collect something rare, I make sure I get it tagged and as close to mint as possible. That's just like a collecting goal for me. Moving on down, we have some Super Mario Sunshine plushes. So these were also imported from Japan. I gotta say, I really lucked out on this. I managed to get all four of these plush from the same seller. These three were in a listing and then this giant Yoshi was in a separate listing, but they're all from the same seller, which I think is so incredible because it went from one collection in Japan to my collection out here in the States. So a little backstory on these, this is a Shine Sprite. This is the only one that doesn't have its actual hang tag, but these were released in 2002, made by Sega. Yes, Sega, and were prizes in UFO catchers. For those of you that don't know what UFO catchers are, they're basically just claw machines. Except for maybe this Yoshi. I don't know for sure if this was a UFO catcher prize or if it was something that you can buy, but I believe it came in like two or three different sizes. This is the largest one, and I got an incredible deal on it, especially with that minty tag. And that is my original Super Mario Sunshine game. And then lining the front is some Super Mario Sunshine gachapons. But anyways, I love these. They are incredible. I will never get rid of them. They are considered grails in the Nintendo community. The third shelf down shows my love for Yoshi, my favorite Nintendo character. So starting at the front, we have that like shiny looking Mario and Yoshi. These are grand opening plush for the Nintendo world in Japan. And they have these like little medallions on their feet. So awesome. And they'll never make this again. And then these like little Yoshi. Yoshi's here are also from Japan and they are for Yoshi's Island and they have like six or seven different colors. They have like a purple, yellow, green, ba basically all the standard Yoshi colors. And I've been trying to track them down and so far I only have two, but that's okay. I'll eventually find them. And then those bigger Yoshis back there, they're called Yoshi Streets, I believe is what the American rendition is of it. But basically they were released alongside Yoshi Story in Japan from UFO Catchers as well. They only made three colors. So I have two green Yoshi because I bought the first one at a single listing. I didn't think I was gonna find a listing with like multiple colors, but then like six months later, I, I found one with the trio. So I ended up getting that one at a great price. And so now that's why I have two. I think out here in the States, each of these Yoshis costs anywhere from like two to $300 a piece. And I think in Japan, when I imported them, I got them for just at $300. So that was a big win. And then we have the Nintendo BDNA Yoshi plush. I have all the colors. There's the little red booties down there and the keychain version, but dead center is the Mega Yarn Yoshi. And that is just a special piece to me because my dad went with me to wait in line in front of Toys R Us to grab that. He didn't have to, but we did it together and it was just fun. And then the last shelf is my rareware merch, Banjo-Kazooie and Conker, which unfortunately they don't make a whole lot of merch of these two. And it's a shame because they're great franchises. So I have a bunch of plush here. Front and center is a UFO catcher plush from Japan. And then I have the BDNA Banjo-Kazooie, a little Stubbins plush. And then in the very back, I have that fan gamer Banjo plush, which is amazing. It's such a great piece. I have the Banjo Amiibo and then that like little vinyl figure that they randomly released at GameStop stores. Nobody knew about them before it was too late. They were all gone and now they go for like crazy prices. And then there's like the U2's vinyl figure and my original N64 cartridge. Moving over to Conquer, we have the U2's plush, such a high quality piece. We have the fan gamer Conquer there. That one actually speaks and it says like a bunch of different phrases and the little crown has magnets on it and you could take it off, super awesome. And then we have that like vinyl figure, the same as Banjo-Kazooie, super obscure. It like hit GameStops for like a second and then they were immediately gone. And then I have the Soldier Conquer vinyl figure from U2. Such a cool piece. I have a little sticker there and a button as well. But this Conquer is my favorite piece on the shelf. You may have seen these in your GameStop stores. It was supposed to promote live and reloaded. A lot of them came in like a cardboard tank. Super cool. If I could find one of those, I would love to have the little tank. But I was 15 years old and I used to go to work with my dad. He was working in Arizona, I believe at the time. And we walked into a GameStop store and here it was. They were selling it. I think it was like only $10 or something like that. And my dad bought it for me and I kept it in like pristine condition because I'm just that type of person. And it's so special because, you know, my dad bought it for me and it's been with me ever since then and I will never let it go. But that is it for the cabinet. I love this piece so much, so much so that I'm gonna add an extra one here and an extra one there. 
We are getting very close to the end, so above the glass cabinet, I have Anakin and Sobulba's Pod Racer. That is from Hasbro when the Phantom Menace came out. Keeping the theme of the Phantom Menace, this Yoda was a store display for Blockbuster videos. It's actually really big. I think it is life size, if I'm not mistaken. If you were following me on Instagram and you saw when I picked this up, it's in pristine condition. It still has the original manufacturer's box with all the foam and everything else in it. Underneath that Yoda is a collection of hot toys. I don't have a crazy amount, but it's funny how when you buy one, then all of a sudden you have four, and then five, and then seven. Hot Toys are really a slippery slope. I have Commander Cody, that Chrome Clone Trooper, Captain Rex, Ahsoka Tano's Clone Troopers, and then I have Boba Fett's down here. That's actually the Boba Fett that I'm missing in Black Series form. I think that's the arena one. And then I have two Mandalorians, his Season 1 attire, and then the deluxe version that comes with Little Grogu. And that pin is actually from Disneyland. They released it, I think, the day The Mandalorian came out, Season 1, and everybody went like, like buckwild for them so I was lucky enough to grab one and then at the bottom shelf I had to remove this last piece of glass otherwise Grogu wasn't gonna fit down there but I have the life-size Grogu I have baby Groot and that is the damn toys Resident Evil 2 Leon Kennedy such a fantastic piece I just I love that figure I really hope they make Resident Evil 4's version and then I put the Mezco Batman 89 down there, but I'm probably gonna move him once I get another glass display. We're gonna jump to my second detolf before I show you that big gaping hole, but here is the HasLab Razor Crest. So happy that I backed this. I'm just bummed that they destroyed it after the first season. And then I have some Micro Galaxy Squadron Pod Racers. I really hope that they make the rest of the racers. I think that would be just such a win for that line. Top shelf is some Pokemon plush. Those are my original Hasbro Pikachus back when I was a kid, just like that big one over there and then I have the sleeping Pikachu, flying Pikachu, and screaming Pikachu which is that munch collab. Those were all imported from Japan and like I mentioned earlier that shiny Gyarados is from the Toyo Hiroshima Carp and of course they did a magic carp plushie to commemorate the event and I have that one tagged. It's just such a beautiful piece. The next shelf down is dedicated to Sonic so that is a Japan import right there. Super vintage. I love the way that looks. Mephilus plush. There isn't a whole lot of merch out there of him. That is the comic book style GameStop exclusive plush and then that Sonic and Tails was one of my very first plush that my parents gave me and so that was one of my earliest memories I remember having a Sonic the Hedgehog birthday party and those were some of my gifts underneath the Sonic shelf we have Nintendo so Luigi's Mansion screaming Luigi we have the Polter Pup those are great plush very happy that I grabbed those and then we have Luigi's Mansion promos Polter Pup and his hat those are I believe UK exclusives and then we have the Mario Elephant the PAX exclusive Metal Mario Luigi smiling variants from Nintendo BDNA. The bottom shelf is some of my exclusive items. So that is the San Diego Comic-Con Call of Duty Ghost. I had that signed by one of the designers, Mark. He's actually a good friend of mine. So thank you, Mark. And then those are the storyboard Micro Galaxy Squadrons. I had to pick them up from eBay, unfortunately. And then that hologram Scout Trooper Star Wars Celebration. Had to pick all those up from eBay. I got a decent deal for what it's worth and the only piece of Fortnite merch that i own is this golden peely so they were supposed to give this away at new york toy fair in 2020 but because of covid and all that stuff they obviously weren't doing it so only 250 of these were made and i won mine through a contest that they were doing on instagram through a bunch of different influencers like accounts that run like toy news and things like that so i ended up winning one and it's actually pretty special okay this leads us to the last section of my collection tour and honestly this is what has prevented me from uploading a video to begin with because I just didn't know exactly what I wanted to put here and what I wanted to do with this space. I mean, I thought I was going to put like rare items there, but then I got the glass cabinet and that whole thing changed. So I just don't know exactly what I'm going to do with this. So I'm going to show you how it is right now and you'll see it evolve as years go on. But ultimately, this was a closet. I took the doors off to maximize space. This is where I place my review table when I'm not doing a review and I'm, you know, playing with my daughter in like this open space here. But I would say this is the biggest catch all from my entire collection. So this is where I just put storage and stuff and accessories so like my weapons and my additional hands and heads and all that kind of stuff goes there and then this is like storage for like props and like joy toy stuff and then I have like more storage over there so it's just like a bunch of bins with just stuff everywhere and then with these cubbies I wanted each you know square to be its own theme and I kind of did that and now there's just like random stuff everywhere so it'll get better over time so here's like some prototype toys that I have I have like a very small collection and 
that's something that's very obscure. I love prototype toys. I think they're fascinating. So whenever I see one on eBay that I'm like really interested in, then I try to grab it for the most part. That is the Kevin from the Spotlight series of Mattel. Very happy to have that. And then like the biggest grails in my collection, or at least some of the biggest grails in my collection are these white and black Yoshi BDNAs. If you know anything about me, then you know my story behind those. And if you don't, then I uploaded a full video on those. So be sure to check that out because it's worth the watch. And then I have some of my graded Pokemon cards here because I thought I was going to like just have one display with, you know, graded slabs. And then I have like my Game Boy Advance from when I was a kid. And then do you guys remember these from like Frito-Lay, those like puzzle pieces? This was like a store display and they like gave it to me. So pretty cool. I did a whole video on those on like Instagram and then just like a bunch of magic harps that I imported from Japan. So everything is just like loosely based. Then I have some of my Godzilla figures here. I still have to find a few of them. I lost them in the move, I think. And then I have the Invader Zim Zipper Mouth plush, which y'all have been super kind about that video. You guys have been loving it. So thank you for all that feedback. At the top is just some sealed TCG stuff. So stuff I want to hold on to like a bunch of Shining Fates. And then I have the My Partner Pack from San Diego Comic-Con, which I'm going to display play once I get that new cabinet and then my binders with all my cards it's a mixture of Digimon Pokemon and some Yu-Gi-Oh in there but I think that is it for the collection tour all right well thank you for watching this like 40 minute video of me talking about my stuff I really hope you enjoyed it it's been quite the collecting journey I hope you discovered some new items that you would want to add in your collection and if you have questions about anything that you saw, drop the comments down below. I'd love to answer anything that I can. Because at the end of the day, we're all collectors. We're all learning and trying to get some new stuff into our collections. Oh, and if you saw like display items that you would want to add in your collection, like the acrylic risers or even this awesome cabinet right here, I'm going to post all the links in the description. So check the Amazon storefront. I've added a lot of good things and even a bunch of toys as well. But that is it, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to connect with me on Instagram and TikTok to stay up to date when new things drop like the upcoming toys in 2024. I also post toy photography and toy videos, stuff you won't see here on YouTube. If you did enjoy this collection tour, be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. Until then, I will see y'all in the next video.